Dan Sodegren is a technology expert. Morning, Dan. Good morning. Do we need to be a bit more John? I think, you know, you might think I'm just going to be a technologist and a futurist. And because I talk about, you know, clever stuff and technology and the future of work, etc., I'm going to be completely all for it. But I'm just listening to John there and I'm thinking, absolutely, there is a, there's definitely a place for understanding that our young people will you know, will ape our our behaviours, of course, and they will look at us as role models. And he sounds like a very positive role model in many respects. But I would also say, of course, as a technologist, that we should maybe not throw the baby out with the bathwater because the amount of good things that technology have done for us, the amount of progress, the amount of not only economic but also social progress that technology has allowed us to do means that actually technology has always been a bit of a positive thing. You know, smartphone technologies, these things actually are a big positive and a big boon for for many, many people in lots of different areas, not just business, but a whole host of other ones. But I thought so John had a really good point. What's the benefit of a 14 What age are your kids, Dan? Oh, my, my child is 13, and a quick one on this one. So, of course, what is the other caller right? said, um, they shouldn't be on social media at, uh, post-13 anyway. And just to answer your question, I think, which might come next, and rightly so, I didn't allow her to have a smartphone until she was in secondary school, and I made sure that she didn't have any of those apps, the social media apps, until at least she was 13. And believe me, it was up to me. I'd be pushing back for even further. But you've got to also remember that, that social media... The, the different apps, obviously there are better ones and there are worse ones from a mental health point of view. Um, but I think we've got to realise as a society, you know, Facebook and all these other companies make billions of pounds and actually they should be pushed to be a bit more responsible about the money they make from the society mm. and how they make their money. So Well, they should, talk- and we talk about that a lot, but I think maybe John has forced us to think... You know, this ultimately is down to us as parents and how we decide to organise our lives and how we decide to parent our children. I mean, we've got Scott in Glasgow who's just got in touch and said it's extremely difficult to say to a teenager they can't have a smartphone. They could end up being excluded or bullied if they're known as the kid without the phone. If we accept they will have phones, it has to be a combined solution, including the devices, the communication providers, the parents and the schools. Now, I'll be honest, you know, well, I mean, my my kids are beyond that. youngest is 17 but yes they did have phones throughout their teenage years and yes they did have access to social media apps so I am no clean tatty in this one at all just to put that out there but when I listen to John you know I think actually the power does lie in our hands to make those decisions and I have at times wrestled with how much my well I've wrestled at how much I'm on my blooming phone far less my <laughs> my kids to be perfectly honest but you know in my role as a parent you do think oh my god snapchat it's constant it's relentless snapping at each other looking to see if somebody has opened a message has read a message has looked at a message it drives them absolutely crazy as a parent Should I not just have said, do you know what? That is doing you no good whatsoever. I don't care if your pals take the mickey out of you for a couple of weeks. This is is not a good influence in your life. Give me the phone. Well, I think there's there's definitely a time for not having your phone. I think there's also definitely a time for limited use on on smartphone technologies and also the apps. But why do they need it? Why does a 13 or 14 year old need a smartphone? What does it bring to their lives that's positive? OK, so I would say that we've got to be careful of saying that they have to have one. But I would also say that if, as it's the major reason for them or the major method for them to communicate with their friends, making them not do this be- might become much more of an issue. This but it's is become not necessarily... the major way of them uh, oh, keeping in touch with their friends. I mean, I used to keep in touch with my friends. You used to keep in touch with your friends, Dan. You'd see them at school, you'd see them after, you'd meet at the corner shop and you'd give them a phone. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have similar conversations when people say, you know, kids are playing Fortnite too much, but actually what they're doing is just hanging out on Fortnite. We say the same when we say that kids are on WhatsApp too much. Well, actually, they're just hanging out on WhatsApp. So, you know, again, it's one of these moments where if we aren't careful, we just start to conflate everything together and we say, actually, we should be banning this stuff because of the negativity around it and some things that were bad. Now, actually, that's how that person has used that device. You can't blame the technology, but you could just say, actually, we're going to look at it like smoking. No one can have this until they're after 16 and they can make a bit more of a conscious decision. Go for it and we'll make it against the law. 
But that's what the government would have to do. The government would have to make it against the law. I, and that would be a big call on their behalf. And I have a feeling it wouldn't go down too no, well. No, no, However, but that's what I think is John has really put into this discussion that's interesting. It's not down to government. It's not down to these big tech companies to regulate. It's down to us as parents to say, you're not having one.